Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. We just got back from Nashville. You shall see a video soon of our wonderful trip. If you're new to this channel, here on this channel you'll see a lot of crafts, a lot of furniture flips, some wonderful dump hauls, and some trash to treasures from those same items. Today I have five easy Mother's Day flips for you using either trash or items that you can find at any local thrift shop. The first item is one of the two stools I got at the dump a couple of weeks ago. I'll try to remember to link the other stool that I have already completed for you. This one, um, I had my husband cut down. It was a taller stool and I wanted it to be um, a small table size by the side of the couch or, you know, a stool you could still sit on, um, but nothing too, too tall. And it was filthy, so I had to scrub and scrub and scrub that. And then I took out my chalked paint in charcoal and I gave that one full coat and then I just went ahead and touched up any areas that needed a second coat. Um, and then once I was finished with that and that dried, chalked paint dries so quickly. This is a Rust-Oleum brand, but any chalked paint would do. I had sanded down the top, but I had this stain I could not get out of it. So I knew it wasn't going to come out perfect, but that's okay. I'm looking for that antique look. So here I am taking a hickory gel stain and a rag and just using that rag to wipe in as much of that stain as I want. I don't want it too, too dark because I am going to use some ink on this and I want to make sure that you can still see that black ink coming through um, but I kind of want the edges a little darker so that it uh, has this look that you're seeing right here. Then I took out my stays on ink pad and a number of different IOD stamps and uh, redesigned stamps and then some of the little wooden stamps that you used to use back in the day when you made cards and things like that just whatever stamps I had hanging around that had the feel that I was going for and then I just took those and put the black ink on them and then randomly wherever I liked I dropped some of those little stamps here and there these look a little bit like little postage stamps and um, some script. I had a little bird. Um, what else? I used, I believe, one of the either Icy Paris or the um, marmalade, uh, what are they called? Pots, something pots, stamps from I, uh, IOD. So those were just kind of random here and there. Just getting this, the look that I was going for. I sort of like that look like almost like it was a trunk or something that had come through the mail. <laughs> so like a little passport of sorts. So after I was done with the stamps and I was happy with how those came out, I did take this outside and I gave it a couple of coats of a matte Rust-Oleum finish. And then again, that dark spot is in the center where I tried to cover a little bit of, of it with one of those stamps. I absolutely love the little bird and the little stamp, um, stamp stamps. <laughs> and uh, here it is finished. So you will have to let me know what you think. I thought beside the couch would be really cute. And then that takes me on to item number two. Now, here's a couple of items that I'm going to be using, and I picked these up at the dump, but you could certainly find these items at any thrift store. They're very common items, and um, there's, you know, they're pretty easy to come by. So this first one, upside down, is a wooden little house that somebody had painted very cute has a little zigzag hanger on the back of it already and it is really quite adorable and i feel kind of guilty painting over it but it was at the dump on the good table so um here i am painting this with two coats of the rust-oleum chalked paint in linen white 
And, um, you know, these are, I'm doing these for Mother's Day. Um, I know it's very last minute since I was in Nashville or after the baby shower. Um, but I, these, these are obviously items that you could use for, you know, spring, summer, any gift items or what have you. But I thought they would be very cute to reproduce if you were looking for an inexpensive Mother's Day gift. So once the second coat of chalked paint was fully dry, I went into my transfers. And this one is by Prima Redesign. And you can find this on the internet on Etsy. And I am uh, showing you here that it is actually very tissue, not tissue like, it is almost fabric. It's hard to describe. Um, it is, it doesn't crinkle like tissue paper. It is um, definitely a little bit more stiff. Um, to be honest, I like it because it is very pretty, um, but I think that it is a little hard to work with. It does not go around corners or, you know, sand easily. So what I do is I cut out what I'm looking for, knowing full well that you are going to be able to see a little bit of the edges that I cut um, on the piece because it is just um, impossible really not to. I mean, maybe if you could match the color exactly with the background, um, but I don't think it's terribly noticeable. Um, so here I am just using some Mod Podge underneath it. And then once again, on top of it, it is very porous. So it does take the, um, the Mod Podge very well. It does not wrinkle, which is nice like a tissue paper does, um, but it is a little bit harder to work with, I think. I just took two of the larger popsicle sticks and just cut those with scissors because I wanted to put something on the front to give you a little bit more of a roof line. And um, that was simple. And I took the antique wax and just went ahead and brushed that on and then just wiped it off with a tissue to mimic a stain. And I did not put any wax on the back because I wanted to use some hot glue and have that stick directly onto the roof line, uh, which I don't believe you are going to see me do, but you obviously know how to do that. So I, um, once I was finished getting those popsicle sticks stuck on there, and I'm sorry, some of this I'm out of frame here, um, I went ahead and I used some of the black uh, chalked paint and I just happened, I was looking for something that was round so I could use it as a little hole. I, I could have, you know, used the paddle drill and drilled it, but I prefer to do this in this particular case. It's not real, really going to be used as a birdhouse, obviously. And I am just pressing that circle on there so that it has that little, you know, appearance of a place that the bird could go. And then once that is dry, I did take it downstairs and drill a little hole through it so I could add a little cabinet knob that I happen to have as a perch. I thought that was uh, very cute. And then I just took the antiquing wax and went around a little bit with a dry brush and then just sort of wiped that just to give that that little rustic look on the edges. And that was all there was to this. So certainly if you can find a cutout piece of wood or an actual birdhouse, this is something simple to do. Use a tissue a napkin rather. If you can get a napkin at the dollar store that you like, you can certainly use that to decoupage. If you have transfers, um, anything. So this is the project I had done a couple months ago with uh, the other part of that uh, same transfer tissue paper stuff. And then this is today's. That's how that came out. So I think it came out really cute. It matches in my bathroom. Um, and so you'll have to let me know what you think about that one. And then that, you can see the edges right here. I'm just showing you that it's not perfect. You do see a little bit of the edging on that. And then on to item number three. So we happen to have gotten these little 
they look like miniature hat boxes of made out of that very thin, I don't know, balsam wood or whatever that's called. Um, but they're in excellent shape. So after I cleaned those, um, I decided that I wanted to just use those because I thought that would be really sweet for Mother's Day gifts. So if you have any box that you can find, um, this is some idea. These are some ideas for you to um, to use. And um, this first one I decided to do once again in the linen white. I, I am actually going to make this for myself um, because I need this in my kitchen. Um, and so because of that, I thought, oh, good idea if I need it. Maybe some other mothers need it as well. <laughs> so here is the top of that. I am leaving the inside to be the natural wood. Um, because one, it's hard when you keep lifting tops off and on and off and on, they wear away the paint. Um, but also because I am going to actually put some tea in one of these, I do not want to have any paint in the interior. Now, while I am waiting for that one to dry, I took the second one since I already had out my uh, paintbrush and such. And I took this green, it's a sage green that I created myself out of mixing a few colors that I happen to have hanging around so I can't give you the exact color but basically it's a silver sage I think it, you know that's kind of one of the the colors that I've seen uh, mimicking this color so once these are dry then I am going to go on and decide what I want to do with them both. So as I said with the first one, since I wanted this to hold tea, I had this um, IOD stamp and uh, it said something about marmalade, but I just covered that in tape. I just wanted the outside edges and I put that on a very beautiful ocean blue uh, ink. This brand, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but it is a lovely color blue. And then I used my little tiny letter uh, num letters to spell out the word T. And then I just pressed that into the center of that. And then um, decided that I wanted to kind of distress, so to speak, the edges of uh, this box. So I just took the ink pad itself and trying to dab a little, rub a little, uh, trying to hit it so that I get a few spots that it actually looks, you know, a little like the ink went over the edge. And then um, did the bottom of the little box as well. And that was very, very simple. On these, you can do tissue paper transfer, um, decoupage rather. You can use any transfers if you have the rub on kind, stamps. You could take some fabric and you could, you know, put some fabric on there. You could go to Graphics Fairy and print something out on. Um, either the, the freezer paper or, or some kind of tissue paper, um, rice paper. There's so many different things that you can do. So um, here it is in my kitchen, and I think it is so, so sweet. So that takes me on to item number four, and that is the green box. So I went on to Graphics Fairy, and I was looking for something round, and I was able to just uh, take this cute little item, make sure that it was seven inches round because that's the, the lid. And once I was in Word, I could see on my um, little ruler at the top of the Word document pretty much the seven in inches, give or take. So I went ahead and Mod Podged that on the top after I cut that out. And it was a little bit bigger than I needed, um, but that was okay once I now this is on rice paper. I don't know if I told you that, but on rice paper, you can actually lift it like I just did and reposition it a little bit. Whereas with a tissue paper, you absolutely cannot. Rice paper is my preference. I think tissue paper is, it wrinkles and it's hard for my printer to handle. Rice paper goes through my printer very easily. And so once that was done, I took this cute little handle that had broken off an alarm clock and I just hot glued it, so obviously it's not going to hold up, but it is adorable just for looks. And that is all I did. So that is so, so simple and so adorable and could hold sewing things or you know, any, un, any number of items, jewelry, tea, whatever. So I thought that would be a very cute gift. You could also put a hole in the top and put an actual like knob on that. And so that takes me on to item number five. 
I have had this in my stash for, oh my goodness, over a year. And I think it's quite cute, even though it's just some little piece made in China. Um, but I really don't do much red in my home. So I had an idea to make a bird feeder. And so I asked my husband to cut me a couple of pieces of wood out of some barn board that we had. And I took a little spindle and one of these little clip push pins that you can get at the dollar store. And he was kind enough to put the little paddle drill hole in there so we could glue in the spindle uh, for a little bit of a perch. And then we used his nail gun and some glue to just make um, an L upside down. And um, then I took that where he had cut, obviously the raw wood needed to have some stain put on it in order to make it match the rest of the barn board. And so here I am using a little bit of antiquing wax with some warm water and a touch of black paint and that gives me the color that I like um, and you don't have to add the black if you like it to be more brown and then I just went ahead on those raw edges and um, just just put that right on there that dries pretty quickly compared to a stain and matches this barn board almost perfectly and then obviously the little edge our end of the spindle where that had been cut also needed to be stained. And so once that was done and completely dried, then I decided to, at this point, I should have added my little zigzag hanging thing before I started on all of this and end up doing it at the end. So if you happen to reproduce something like this, if you want to hang it on a tree outside or if you want to hang it on a wall, then put your little zigzag thing on first. Now this little um, clip from the dollar store um, just kind of you can press it in or, or glue it in or it has it's almost like a small it's like a the cross between a small nail and a pin um, you can't really hammer it because the clips in the way but once you can get that in we, we drilled a real small hole um, I took this little pitcher I guess gravy boat pitcher creamer whatever it is and was trying to figure out how to hang it from that clip um, so I tried a little jute wine and then I had a piece of leather cord that I thought might hold up, and especially if I do put this outside, which I do think that I will eventually do that. Um, and so I just put it around the handle and then glued it together in a circle and then put it in the clip with some glue to make sure that um, that wouldn't be going anywhere. And again, here it is with the zigzag hanger on the back. Should have done that first. And then I just put a little bit of bird seed in this. Now, of course, you don't want this to spill out on the floor, so it does need to sit at an angle. Um, but I thought it would be very cute. A little bird could actually perch there and um, eat out of that. And then the cover to that will keep it dry if it happens to rain. Um, so I thought that came out really cute. And it really, it cost me zero dollars. But you could probably pick something up like for a dollar. And if you have any wood hanging around, you can have this done very inexpensively. And it is just really cute. So you'll have to let me know which of the things was your favorite and um, make sure that you hit like and leave a comment if you'd like to that certainly gives YouTube the um, idea that I should continue working with them <laughs> and so uh, subscribe and I will see you in the next one thanks for stopping by